Howdy, hi, ties. I'm Jed Hoffman of Beach Film News, and I would like to welcome you to the last ever Beach Film News of this school year, coming to you guys on the last ever day of school. To start, I would like to give a big happy birthday to Mr. Leslie. To start off with the segments, I would like to start us off with a retrospective about online school learning. COVID-19, a virus that completely swept the world and pulled the rug out from under our feet. It's insane to think that it's already been a whole year since this pandemic began. A dangerous right. virus is spreading rapidly in China, and U.S. officials are very worried that it could come here. China has more than 200 confirmed cases of coronavirus, it's called, which produces pneumonia-like symptoms. I remember my mom just last March sending me the update that there were 40 cases in Homestead. What's even crazier to think about is how high that number has jumped to. The statistics of it all as a whole, the amount of infected, the amount of deaths, the amount of loss. This is truly an unprecedented situation. This virus doesn't discriminate. It attacks everyone. I want every American to be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. A little under a year since the WHO declared COVID-19 a global pandemic, and we've lost more than 500,000 Americans. But it's not all hopeless. In recent times, multiple vaccines have sprung up to help combat the virus. And with each day, more people are vaccinated, more lives are saved, and more problems are solved. But enough of that dark and gloomy stuff. My interests lied elsewhere, in the more personal aspects of the pandemic. With the amount of time that we've all been locked up, I was curious to see what have people been up to the last year. How has this changed people? What hobbies have they picked up? Have they even been doing anything at all? The plan was simple. Get a cameraman, microphone, mask, and some hand sanitizer, and go door to door asking my neighbors what have they been doing with their time. The plan didn't go that simple. Ironically enough, my quarantine interview led to me being quarantined. So I'm basically locked up for the next couple of weeks. Defeated and left with nothing to do but to grovel in the idea that I have no more ideas, the solution hit me. The internet. So over the last few days, I've been hopping chat room to chat room, server to server, asking people from our own home field of America to our neighbors upstairs in Canada the same exact question I would have asked my neighbor. And this was the result. All my name is Ty. Uh, I'm 17 years old and I'm currently finishing out my junior year of high school. What have you been up to during the pandemic, Ty? Uh, nothing much. Mostly playing games and whatnot. Have you picked up any new hobbies, any skills, any random things that you just started during this quarantine? Uh, I'm a very introverted person, so anything uh, I could do at home I was already doing, so nothing really new popped up. But one thing I did start doing during the quarantine was... Uh, Started doing some light workouts here and there, some calisthenics, but uh, I eventually like dropped it because I started to uh, slack on it. Hey, my name is Nick. I'm 29 years old and I am a school teacher. What have you been up to during the pandemic, Nick? Well, mostly I decided, uh, you know, I did the thing that most people did, you know, where I, I played video games, I kind of watched TV, everybody watched Tiger King during those days. I did that alongside my wife. But that got kind of old really quickly, which I didn't anticipate because I've been playing video games and consuming entertainment like that pretty much my whole life. But, it, you know, without having something to buffer, you know, spending time with friends or family, you know, it, it kind of got old really quickly. So I uh, I took a look in, in the back corner of my, of my room or of my living room, I guess you could say, and I saw my guitar tucked away. And I had been learning at kind of like a slow pace, but I had never really taken it seriously. And so I kind of decided then that, I mean, what better time than, than now? I mean, nobody was going to hear me play like crap. So I might as well, uh, you know, figure it out. And so far, I can say that I'm still experiencing some really great success on it. Well, we've already done the film festival, but it's time for the film festival award ceremony. I think we have 
somebody in this room by the name of Olivia Mota. Yeah. And she became the best writer for her film. What is it called? And his name is uh, Luca. And there's somebody in here that actually I don't know. But you know what time the person I did know he was running events. Uh oh. But this person ended up winning the Best Actor Award. And his name is Gonzalo Alpiquelli. And I want to know. <laughs> I want to know how many times you had to say the F word. <laughs> did you really feel? Did you really feel it in you? Yeah. Can you give us one? Give us one. Give us one. Give us one. Give us one. I didn't even recognize him when he came in. That's how much he got into the part. Give, give us one. Give us one. Give us one F word. Give the camera. Give us an F word. Effort? Give us an effort. Yeah, give us. No. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. No. Oh, after, after class. <laughs> okay, the next one. I want to say uh, congratulations to two people that I have in class, but I didn't see all year. But they tried really hard on this film. You can see it when you look at the film. I just wish it had a little bit of a romance part to it. That it wasn't just all bang, bang, shoot, shoot, even though that's how they exist. That's like a that best cinematographer, too. Andrew Mendes and Jack Perea. Yeah. Where is the best? There we go. And I'm telling you, cinematography is amazing. It just, uh, it was really well done. So congratulations, guys. All right? See you later. Hopefully. I would like to congratulate Mr. Coleman. Somebody that kind of wanted to do this from the beginning, but they were saying, oh, I don't really want to. You kind of had to force him. You kind of had to force him. And I then forced him, and that is Luca Anelli. Oh! Luca Anelli is Award that goes to Felipe Rivera, Anthony Sanchez, and Abdullah Rahman, and that is for best film. <laughs> this is for the man, Jed Hoffman, that every week, every week was on, was on Beach Film News. He gets the best host award. Yes. Yeah. No matter what happened, it was midnight on a Sunday. We did it. Okay, the next honorary mention, no matter what happened, it goes.
goes to Alexandra Loco, who's in there, every week, every week. What did he do? Weekly news. Honorary mention to this week in history. Yay! Yeah. This is the People's Choice Award. The only thing I can say is exorcism, and it goes to Javier Aliaga. Now that we're officially almost done with school, it's time for some summer activities. Good morning, High Tides. Summer is around the corner and we're all very excited about it. But some of us don't really know what to do in order for it to be fun. Here are 12 enjoyable activities you can do throughout summer in a safe way without being bored. Don't focus on all the summer activities that have been canceled or put on the unsafe list. Instead, think about the positive and all the wonderful things you can still do at home or while social distancing this summer. Activity number one, have a daily workout routine. Exercising can not only offer numerous health benefits to the human body, but also help you enjoy time with friends, family, or by yourself in a safe way. It is recommended to walk or exercise for 30 minutes to one hour every day. Activity number two, go camping. Whether it's in the backyard of your house or the great outdoors, roast some marshmallows, tell spooky stories, and spend the night under the stars. Activity number three, go out for a swim. Take a swim in the pool or beach. This is a great source of entertainment since it includes lots of activities. Activity number four, enjoy the great outdoors. After months of being in quarantine, most of us have probably used fresh air and exploring nature as an option. Have a picnic, take a hike, go on a walk, bike around, or go for a scenic drive. Activity number five, make it a staycation or go on a road trip. Your very own hometown or one close by can be a surprising source of interest and fun. Make a list of the popular attractions in your area you've never visited or the ones you've been to and loved. See how many of them you can hit this summer. If the budget allows, book a stay at a hotel where you can leave daily stressors behind and simply relax. Road trips can be very fun throughout this time of year. Activity number six, do arts and crafts. Don't be shy to grab whatever art supplies you have on hand, even just a pencil and paper, to go outside and create a masterpiece made by you. Things you can try include sketching, watercolor, pencil color, or oil painting. You could get some pretty good art out of this. You can even invite people and learn about one another's artistic tastes and explore your chosen artistic style. Activity number seven, read a good book or journal. Take a break from technology. Reading and journaling can be done at whatever time throughout the day, but doing it before bed is always the best. By doing this, it can make you feel relaxed, reduce stress, improve sleep quality, and also including many other things. Read for about 20 minutes and then journal for nearly 15 minutes. You can switch in between this every other night. Activity number eight, go to a drive-in movie theater. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, a number of drive-in movie theaters around the country have been open. Catch the mid-century vibe by checking one out. Activity number nine, host a movie night. Take a vote on which movie, make sure everyone dresses in pajamas, have all the drinks and snacks prepared, and enjoy your night together. Activity number 10, volunteer for your community or start a charity event. Volunteer work is not only free, but also makes you feel good. Give back to your local community by volunteering your time to a cause important to you. Here are a few ideas such as feeding the homeless, picking up litter, 
planting or harvesting at a community garden, organizing a cleanup around your neighborhood, and more. Another one of those ideas that's free to do and benefits people in need is setting up events that can raise up money for a specific fundraiser. There are a variety of things you can do. Also, you may get community service hours as an advantage. Activity number 11, rearrange or declutter your room. This is probably not for everyone, but if you're one of those who absolutely loves making your home look fresh and new on the regular, spend the day wildly rearranging almost anything you can. Getting rid of things you don't use can have an impact on your living space. Cleaning up your area will give you more room. Go through as much as you can and organize things separately by making recycling boxes or bags. Set aside some time to finally organize and declutter. It's okay if you haven't done it over the past year. Now is the time. It gives your room a new and better look. Activity number 12, learn something new, such as making music or finding an instrument new to you, and also learning a new language. I hope you all have an amazing summer 2021 and enjoy your time off to do great things, not only for yourself, but also the people surrounding you. You know, now that it's the last day of school and the last episode of Beach Home News, that also means it's the last this week in history of the year. Check it out. Good morning, High Tides. Welcome back to this year's last segment of this week in history. To start our last segment, on June 11th, 1978, the movie Grease starring John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John opened for the first time. To follow that, on June 12, 1997, the U.S. Treasury Department unveiled a new $50 bill with a security thread that glows yellow under ultraviolet light, making the bill more counterfeit resistant. After that, on June 12, 2013, the world's oldest man and oldest man recorded in history, Jerome Kimura, died at the age of 116 years old. Kimura died of natural causes in Kyoto, Japan. And to conclude our final segment, on June 13th, 1927, Charles Lindbergh and his aircraft completed the epic journey from New York to Paris and became a hero to the American people with his aircraft, the Spirit of St. Louis. Well, High Tides, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to the final segment of This Week in History. Well, it's time for the last second opinion of the year. Last week, we asked you, the viewers, did you enjoy Second Opinion? The answer, yes, by a 100% complete sweep victory. Now, that's the last thing I have to say for this year, but to leave you with one more thing that I have to say, it's very emotional. It's that Sixers and Five. Well, that's all for Beach Film News. See ya.